Dab like LDZ, Dead Players, Problem Child, Potent Funk Records, chilling with Wordplay TV in the face. All right, it's Nick Russell. I'm here today for Wordplay Magazine. Dabla, AKA Jimmy Changa, AKA Ivan de Gollyfield, AKA Jimmy Longstraw. What more can I say? What's good, brother? All good, man. Good, good to have you here, man. You're on the album promo tour at the minute for the new project, That's Death good. Moves. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the album title first off, man. The title um, just come from the love of Kung Fu. Just sounded like a cool fucking name. Thought of the title before, actually, I was about 30% into making what would be the album. Didn't think it was going to be an album. Mm. I was just focusing on doing one sick song and one sick visual, and then before I knew it, it was going to be an album. And then thought of the name, um, and it was like, yeah, I have to do an album now because it's a really fucking cool name. When did you first come in the game? Fuck. Long time ago. There was London Zoo stuff, like late 90s. Wow. Yeah. Man, the man. game has changed a lot since then, I guess. Man's an old man out yeah, here. Veteran. Yeah, veteran. Yeah. Veteran in the game, man. Yeah. Jeez. So I've been a part of like many albums, like all the London Zoo stuff, the Dead Player stuff, uh, the Problem Child stuff. Um, my first like official album was on High Focus, 2016, Year of the Monkey. And this is like the second one, the follow up to that, basically. Okay. And how have you approached this project compared to the last one? What are you trying to tell your fans about Dabla mm. that they wouldn't have heard on either Year of the Monkey or any kind of previous work? How are you coming? What's your approach? Um, didn't really have like a, you know, like a, a set, you know, this is what I want. This is what I want people to, to, to get from this. I just focused on making the best music I could with my favorite producers like Ghost Town, some guy, um, Hashfinger, I've never actually met yet, but always been a massive fan, always wanted to, 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 to collab. Um, Don Piper, who's a special guy. and um, In a good way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've known him for a while and, and we get on well and we make good music together. And uh, AJ Swizzy, brethren from uh, Switzerland, he made the flying beat and that hemisphere beat. So it's like, I think it's, it's just, you know me, man, it's like, I'm like that guy with the big, drum and the cymbals and like playing everything and like would you want grime hip-hop yeah yeah so it's like a big it's that hybrid rap shit it's a bit of everything kind of uh, from all my influences jungle from making garage from you know being just yeah. being part of all these scenes that, and exports the uk has churned out over the last couple decades so it's just like yeah it's kind of like everything that i like just in 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 my favorite album I yeah guess. So um, yeah, I didn't really have a plan for it, man. It was just like, just wanted to make music that that inspires me for starters. If I'm not inspired, how, how am I gonna inspire anyone else? So, right. Yeah, just try to make good shit. Yeah, I think you've definitely done that, man. And you you launched it with the, one of the maddest music videos I've seen in my life, man. You flew out yeah. to Nevada Desert, am I right? Yeah, yeah. To shoot this, man. So tell us a little bit about that process and mm. what were some of the highlights of making that video? Because it looks like it wasn't it wasn't a one day type thing. Yeah, it, <laughs> it looks like multi multi million pound Hollywood type shit, but it really is just a couple of dudes. We like we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't plan anything. Yeah. We just knew that we wanted to do something epic. Um, we'd already designed the robot with um, Poseworks, who's responsible for all of the VFX and and all of the, all of that um, all of that you know good stuff. And um, we'd already designed the, the robot and done the vines video, which was like fully CGI. So it's 100% CGI. Even the, the warehouse that it was in, it was a uh, it was um, modelled on a real warehouse, but then redrawn like in computer sort of. You know, and if they had to create their own atmosphere and the light is mental. Wow. Like, yeah, it's been a trip, like watching that whole shit. Um, so we had the robot and we knew that we wanted to do something interacting in real life, like with me and the robot. So, um, yeah, like obviously the, you know, we wanted the crash landing. So the desert kind of made sense, um, but we didn't, we didn't know how it was going to turn out. We definitely didn't know it was going to be that sick. Like. Basically, we don't know what we're doing <laughs> and no one's noticed yet, so it's, it's, it's all good. Until now. Yeah, <laughs> until now, until, to give the secrets away. But um, yeah, it was mental. We just like loaded up a car full of loads of shit that we found from this dude's house that we were staying in, like a little fixie bike thing and a globe, and then just headed out there and just started shooting, man. Just started building the bridge as we walk along, basically. And yeah, it just turned out sick. 
Yeah, I think it is, man. <laughs> I think, yeah, what's, what's been some of the maddest comments and feedback that you've had about the video from people online and friends and yeah. kind of your, your, your peeps around you, man? What's been some of the more kind of surprising or some of the best feedback that you've had? Well, like, um, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's all been good. I'm, I've, it's still like, it's, that was like a childhood dream for me because I was always into like graphics and like 3D modeling and like, you know, all that Pixar stuff. Like, you know, I think we've all got a soft spot for it. So to be actually like making some something like that was, yeah, it was like a kid at Christmas type thing. Mm. I still wake up, I woke up yesterday and I was like, did we do this? Yeah, Is we, this real? Yeah. yeah, we did it, man. And um, yeah, it's a good feeling. Dope, yeah. no, that's dope, man. So if, talking about the CGI side of things, what's what, what is the kind of inspiration for like this the character and the way that yeah. it was carried out? Is there any movies that really, um, that, that, that you had in mind that you wanted to kind of take inspiration from? Yeah, yeah, fully. Like, so we wanted, you know, I'm a sort of a Wally fan mm. and a, Johnny Five short circuit fans who mm. wanted to do something that people were familiar with, like and a little bit nostalgic. Um, but obviously, didn't want to infringe on any copyright, so we had to kind of, you know, lose the little tracks and made him float and kind of we changed his head to like a, a CCTV camera, like them old school ones, just to give him a little bit of identity. And um, and then yeah, he was born and then. The pose works put like the DBLA on the side of the head, which kind of was like, oh shit, he's his own little dude now. Mm. And then yeah, yeah, just naturally man, just a bit of sketching and gave it to a sick guy who learned all these mad programs and just you know, put it together like unbelievably so on his own as well. Yeah. Was like, yeah. Okay. And how did you forge that relationship with him? Because it's, most people ain't gonna do that mm. on a shoestring budget. Yeah. Like, how did you? How did you forge that relationship where he'd want to do that? Apart yeah. from being a dope artist, like what was it that kind of melded that relationship? Yeah, well, um, without giving too much of the game away, like Poseworks is a mad entity and like um, he's got like, you know, loads of fingers in loads of different pies. Um, and I think he just wanted to do something um, creative because, you know, like a lot of people that sort of do a lot of corporate work, it doesn't really fulfill the soul. Mm. You need to like do right. something that you know that's that's creative and that you know you actually enjoy. And I think he saw this as an opportunity to do something, you know, that he probably wouldn't have um, been able to in the in the corporate right. realms. So, yeah, I think he's used it for his portfolio, nice. and you know, obviously we, we've used it for uh, for the album. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. He's a yeah, he's a, he's a sick guy, man. Okay, that's dope, man. Um, so on the album itself, I see you've got a lot of sick features on there, man. Mm. So tell us a little bit about your selection process and mm. and um, first of all, like who's on the album? Who's, who, who are the features? Yeah, on there? so I've got um, Rag and Bone Man, um, Illa Man, Jam Backstar, and Eva Lazarus, and they're all my homies. And you know, it's just nice to have friends, sick, talented friends, like on the project. Um, yeah, just um, Illa Man, as you know, like we've. Uh, We've done the, done the circuits together. We've done the problem child thing. Um, so yeah, we've we've made loads loads of songs together. And this particular one on the album is actually my favourite song on the whole album. It is like it's just Illa Man at his sickest, and, mm. and the beat's insane. It's a some guy beat. So it's like it's it's a real like kind of problem child okay. type type beat. Um, uh, backstage, you know, we're in. The, in the Dead Players, um, I was about to say crew, group. And uh, yeah, so, you know, he's an obvious choice. He's my, one of my, my brother, you mm. know what I mean? Um, Eva is absolutely probably the most talented singer and rapper all in one. Um, and so, yeah, I feel really blessed to have her as part of the project as well. And we're friends, you know what I mean? And uh, obviously Rag and Bow Man, we made, made this song uh, quite a while ago, um, I'll tell you a mad story actually, me, Illa Man and Rag and Bow Man were in my house, around the same time we kind of like made that song, we weren't working on that song, and um, yeah, you've been to my house, yeah, so I'm on the corner, and all of a sudden there's this massive crash, and this like, old lady's kind of lost control of the wheel, and she smashed into my missus' car at the time, and the car's like, come through and almost taken the front of the house out. Whoa. But the guy next door had a, like a, a rail. He was quite an elderly chap. And the rail kind of stopped the car from taking out the front of the house, which 
could have collapsed and there could probably be no Dabla, Rag and Bowman, and Illaman now. Or maybe like one of us would be limping, who knows? But yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, Were you guys in the front of the house when it happened? Yeah, yeah. So you were right there yeah. ready to be crushed by Yeah, this. it's a bungalow, so if the, wow. if the first wall goes, it's all just going. But it's um downhill literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought I'd that's, share no, that little story that with like you. sounds like a mad story, yeah, yeah. man. Like, fate intervened and yeah, you yeah. believe in that side of things. It's got nothing to do with the album no. or the feature, but... Yeah. But, yeah, yeah man.